All right, guys, so uh, just a quick tutorial on some texture issues. A lot of times I'll have to go online and pull a, a brick texture or find an image to use as a, a bitmap background. Uh, and often, I'd say probably the majority of the time, it's not a seamless texture, meaning that when you tile it, uh, you end up getting uh, kind of rough edges or edges that you can see the patterning. So here, if I just copy this entire brick image, I'm just going to make a new composition, like a really big 10,000 pixel by 10,000 pixel, and I'm going to paste this brick in here. I'll actually zoom in a little bit. But let's say that I end up making multiple copies of it. You can see here um, that we can see the seams. Uh, they're very, very evident. Um, and, you know, obviously I wouldn't want a, a wall or a building of sorts to be that recognizable. So I'm going to show you a quick way on how you can try to fix that. Uh, so what you want to do is to get uh, a fairly high resolution image. Um, I also find that having, you know, an image with lots of uh, material in it is good. So here we have lots of bricks. Let's say, for instance, I actually pulled a brick image that was about this big. Um, you'd still notice the tiling, even if it was seamless, just because it's uh, it's it's going to repeat so often. But here, uh, when I scale this to be true brick size on my rendering, uh, it's less likely that I'll notice that it, it is repeating. So what I want to do is to select a square region of the photograph that has you know pretty similar brick colors. So if I look up here, I have some dark red here, dark red. But really, in in the bottom here, it's it's pretty similar in color. So I'm going to just pull up and uh, I want to make sure that I have a square selection. That's really, really, and really important. Uh, so here's 768 pixels. I'm actually going to slide this over um, because the middle of the photograph is more even in tone. Uh, so that's all I need. I'm going to copy that and make a new composition. It's going to make it automatically my um, clipboard size, which is 768. Uh, now, all I have to do is paste the image in here, and I'm going to do uh, some kind of tone adjustments. So oh, that's not at all what I want. I'll do it manually. So brightness and contrast. I'm going to reduce some of the contrast. That's going to help uh, help the image be less recognizable as a pattern. And I can also play with the brightness. Uh, that looks good to me. Image. Um, and then I can also use hue and saturation. And if I desaturate it a little bit, it's going to become more even in tone, uh, which is fine. The next thing I need to do is to shift the image. Essentially, we're going to, uh, well, we can think about it this way. Right now, the left side is going to be matching up with the right side, and we know that's an issue. And there's no way that I can come and, like, actually force this right side to match the left. The same for the top and the bottom. But if we were to shift this image, if we were to roll 50% of it to the right and 50% of it to the top, and it were to wrap around, then these seams that we see on the edges would actually be seamed in the middle. By seaming it in the middle, we can then work on kind of blurring that out and correcting that uh, that seam. So to do that, I go Filter, Other, uh, and Offset. And I know that my, my image is 768. That's really important. So with 768, I actually know that I need to do half of this, which would be, let's see, um, Let's do the easy way to do this. Half of 8 is 4, and half of 76 would be 35, 38, right? Yeah, 38. So 384 would be half the image, and 384. We're going to do both horizontally and vertically. And you can see here now the that kind of disjointed seam in the very middle of the image. That's perfect. That's exactly what we want. Um, so, what I then do is come in and use my clone stamp tool, uh, and this is kind of a laborious process. It takes a while, and I'm going to use this something with a soft edge, and I'm even going to change my opacity down, and I want to sample, um, you know, the image above and below to kind of erase that seam. Uh, so doing that, I know that I really would be long uh, on, on, like we can see here, here's a half course, so I'm going to go with the full course, and we know that there should be a grout line just because we're using brick that you know there's some hints there so I'm gonna come in and paint over top of that seam and you can see it, you know it's it's pretty easy to get off um, and not have the right alignment so I'm gonna try my best to align those mortar joints as I as I paint over these seams uh, that's not bad uh, so I can come back and forth 
and just start working away at these joints. I'm actually going to pause the recording, uh, work through this, and then unpause it. All right, so uh, you know, just maybe five minutes of work, and I tried my best to remove the seams. You can see it's definitely not perfect, but it's a lot better. So now if I came in and I just copied everything here, I'm going to go back to that big canvas. This is what we had before. But now, if I paste this image uh, and make some copies of it, oops, got a little off there. I just want to make sure it snaps. I'm going to merge those layers, make more copies, merge that, and go, let's go vertically. You can see that we can still recognize some of the patterning, and that's because of the, the repetition of the colors. Um, but if you compare this top texture to what we had on the bottom, uh, these hard seams that we see are gone. Uh, so that's one way you can go about it. Uh, that's a pretty simple tip. Uh, and obviously spending more and more time uh, refining those joints and refining the color palette uh, would be much easier. Doing textures like rock and gravel, uh, that takes extra long time. Uh, because it's organic geometry, it's not going to be so easy to find where the correct seams are, but it would still work there. Uh, I guess ground covers like grass or leaves, the same thing could work. Uh, really anything that's going to be tiled could, you could take a seamed texture and make it seamless or much, mess, much less seamed. I hope that helps.